Hello, YouTube. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about the Excel 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain for the exam called Create and Manage Worksheets and Workbooks. Overall, this accounts for 30 to 35% of the overall exam, and it has five different sections in this domain. When I counted it up, there's over 30 different things you could be tested on within this domain. Because of that, we're going to go ahead and break this up into three different videos. In this third video, we're looking at customizing options and views for worksheets and workbooks, as well as configuring worksheets and workbooks for distribution. So let's go ahead and jump into Excel. We are talking about the Excel 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Create and Manage Worksheets and Workbooks. Specifically, we're looking at the subdomain called Customize Options and Views for Worksheets and Workbooks. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to hide and unhide worksheets. To do that, what we want to do is right-click on the sheet that we want to hide, and then we want to just select Hide. And now that is gone from our view. It's still in our workbook, we just can't see it. In order to unhide a worksheet, we just want to right-click on one of the tabs, click Unhide, and then you want to select the worksheet that you want to unhide, which for this was Planets. And now that's visible again. The next thing it tells us we need to be able to do is to hide and unhide columns and rows. Maybe we don't care about the diameter of the planet. If I right-click on this column here, column C, and I select Hide, that column disappears. Now it's not deleted, it's just not visible within our worksheet. You can see if you look very carefully, a little bit thicker line between B and D. You can also notice that it skips from B to D. If I wanted to hide a row, it's very similar. We just want to select the row that we want to hide and right click on it and then select hide. And notice row four is now hidden. To unhide it, there are a few ways to do it. You could double click to reveal the hidden row there, or if you select the surrounding columns or rows and then right click and select unhide, your column will reappear. The subdomain tells us that we also need to be able to customize the quick access toolbar. The quick access toolbar is usually located above the ribbon, but we can make it appear below by clicking this drop down here and clicking show below the ribbon, which is something you could be asked to do. I'll go ahead and put it back above. You can also check some of the options here if you want to see those options in the quick access toolbar. Or if you click more, you have the option of even customizing this further. And you have a bunch of the ribbon tabs as well as some special sections that you can pick and choose features from. I have a video on customizing the quick access toolbar. I'll go ahead and post a link to that in the description and I'll go ahead and post a card so you can quickly access that. Something else you might be asked to do is to change the workbook view. To do that, we want to go to the view tab here at the top and in our workbook view section. Normally, you're in the normal, but you can change it to page break preview so that you see the line and how the page is split up for printing. You can also do page layout, which allows you to quickly access the header and footer. I prefer the normal, so I'll go ahead and click back on that. This subdomain tells us we need to change the window views. And there are a couple things in this section. Something you could be asked to do is to freeze the panes. You should be familiar with this group. I have a video on this. I'll go ahead and post a link to that in the description. I'll also post a card for this. But you could be asked to freeze panes so that a certain section always appears, whether it's a column or a row. Go ahead and unfreeze that. You could also be asked to switch the windows here. So if I have multiple workbooks open, I can just click this and it will switch the workbook for me. You could be asked to change the views here so that the screen is split. To do that, you just want to click the split button here. And if you notice, my screen has been split up into four quadrants. So I have individual control over each window. I can scroll down here and notice that I have the ability to look at that there. And I can also scroll up in this section so I can see the top part of this worksheet. And then I can also scroll on this side so that I can see more information. We'll go ahead and unsplit this. And now we're looking back at our one view. The subdomain tells us that we need to be able to change the magnification by using the zoom tools. And we're still on the view tab here at the top. And what we want to look at is in the zoom group. You can change the zoom here and it gives you the option of choosing a specific magnification or you can choose a custom here. 
we'll go ahead and do 200% just so you can see that. And then if you want to go back to 100%, you can just click this button and it'll push it back. While we're here, we're going to talk about this section here. You might be asked to hide the formula bar or the headings or the grid lines. So just be familiar with those as well. We're also told that we need to be able to show the formulas within the worksheet. That's actually not going to be on the views tab. It's going to be on the formulas tab. And we're going to be in the formula auditing group. And we're going to click show formulas. And I just have one, but it's this one right here. And then finally, this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to modify the document properties. To do that, what we want to do is go to the file tab here at the top, which puts us in the backstage view. And then in our property section, we have the ability to change some of these. If you're asked to put in a status, that category is not here. What you want to do is click show all properties, and then you have the ability to change the status. We'll go ahead and just put in pending. And notice I just clicked in that. We'll go ahead and type in pending. And then something I notice my students do is add a space at the end of this, and then they click out. In things like G metrics, they're marked wrong because they have that space. You want to make sure that you capitalize the words that are capital and that you don't add extra spaces. We'll go ahead and hit the backspace key on that. And then what we want to do is just click out to set that text. We're looking at the subdomain called Configure Worksheets and Workbooks for Distribution. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to set a print area. The first thing we want to do is select our range. So maybe we want to select all of this here. Then what we want to do is go to the Page Layout tab here at the top. And in the Page Setup group, we want to click the Print Area dropdown and click Set Print Area. And now that's been marked for the printing area. Something else you could be asked to do is to display the repeating row or column titles on multiple worksheets. We're on the Page Layout tab still. We're in the Page Setup group. And I'm just going to go ahead and click Print Titles, or you could click the dialog box here. The print titles would have brought you to the sheet tab here in this dialog box. And then you have the ability to set your rows to repeat and your columns to repeat. We'll do rows first. And notice that just collapsed that box. And then we'll go ahead and select row three. And I'll pop this back out. So now row three will print on every page if this gets past one page. You can also do the same here for the column. You could select the column you want to have. We'll go ahead and click OK. This domain tells us that we need to be able to set print scaling, and you can do that from the scale to fit here and just change your percentage, or you could pop out this dialog box and you could do fit to one to one page. You can adjust the percentage, but you can also do that from the print section. So we'll go to the file, print, and we can change that here. While we're in the print section, it does tell us that we need to be able to print all or part of a workbook. And we have those settings here, such as print selection or print active sheets. We can select print entire workbook or print selected table. You have the option of changing a few other settings here. You should be familiar with this section. This domain also tells us that we need to be able to save workbooks in alternative file formats. Now, there's really two sections you should be familiar with for this. The first one is the export section, and you'll have like a create PDF or XPS document. And then you'll have the option of creating that here. And this will pop out and give you some things like open file after publishing, maybe some optimized settings, and same for XPS document. We'll go ahead and cancel. We'll go back because we want to go to the Save As section. And we'll click Browse here. And in this section, what you want to be familiar with is the different save types that you have the options for. So maybe you want an Excel macro enabled workbook. Or maybe you wanted to save this file so it would work with Excel 2003. You have a lot of options here, and you should be familiar with changing the file type. You should also be familiar with navigating through the folders in case it tells you to save your file somewhere other than the documents folder. This domain also tells us we need to be able to inspect a workbook for hidden properties or personal information. We're in the backstage view, and we're in the info section, and we want to click the check for issues drop down here. And there's actually three parts that we need to be able to inspect. Currently, we're looking at the inspecting documents for hidden properties or personal information, but it also tells us that we need to inspect a workbook for accessibility issues and for compatibility issues. We'll look here at inspect document first. We'll go ahead and click yes when this pops up. The main thing in this section is you want to make sure the section is checked off for what it wants you to be looking for. If it's not checked off, it's not going to look, but once I click inspect, it'll give me the option like, for comments, there were no comments to remove. And as I scroll through this, most of it's not something I need to worry about for this document. But if it says remove the personal information from this document, I now have the ability to click remove all. 
and it will pull that information from the document. Let's go back to that info section because we need to look at checking for accessibility. And in this section, it gives us some warnings for this document. In this section, it could also talk about things like pictures not having alternative text. You should be familiar with this section. And then finally, we'll go back to that file info section because we want to look at checking for compatibility, which this section will let you see if you were to save this file and try and use it in a previous Excel version, you might have issues. And you have the ability to change the versions that it's looking at. We'll go ahead and close out of this box. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.